Hey guys, this is a general dis Hey guys, this is a general tutorial on how to use Lollipop characters. Timestamps are in the description. We've added three new features to the add-on: Armature Bind, Skin Bind, and Toggle Simplify. Armature Bind binds clothes to the armature of your target. Skin Bind binds objects to your character's skin. It also works for clothes and will be added to clothes in motion, so you can check that out. Toggle Simplify is there to help turn Simplify on and off for when you're animating or working with characters. Installing it is a bit different from your usual add-ons but it's extremely simple. First, unzip the package you download, then open up your Blender, go over to your Preferences, Add-ons, Install and search for the Lollipop folder, Add-on and you'll see lollipopcharacters.py. We're almost done. Under the Lollipop folder, navigate to your Lollipop folder until you find this text that says this is the Lollipop folder and click accept. And that's it. The add-on will be in your end panel. We've tried to keep it simple. Here you can select from all the assets and use the functions available in your workflow. Some people complain that posing the character is slow on this system, which made me understand that for some of you, this may be your first time working with characters which made us add some functionality to the add-on to save you the stress of learning some technical things. Because most characters carry subdivision and hair, you can't pose them easily out of the box no matter which PC you're using. So when posing, you have to toggle simplify. Just press this button here and as you can see it's now so much easier to pose the characters when in pose mode. Some features that are bound to the character such as brows may detach as you can see here but not to worry, they reattach after simplify is disabled. Now let's have a look at the rigs. They all have the same format aside the cat rig. These are the finger bones. You can bend them all by scaling each one or select all the bones, press full stop and set the pivot to individual origins. Then press comma and set orientation to local. Now when you scale, they all bend uniformly and stay in place and you can press R, X to rotate each finger inward. Here you have the waist bone, the foot, this bone here you can rotate to bend the heel. You also have this bone at the back, you have the jaw bone, and on your side menu you have this option for retain lips or lips retain, which sets whether to retain the lips while dragging the jaw. You have the eyelid bones up here, and the lower eyelid bones down here. You also have these bones for the eyebrows. You can actually just touch every bone and see what they do. To reset the pose, press A to select all and press Alt R, Alt G and Alt S to reset location, rotation and scale. For the hand bone you also have this option on the side called auto stretch which sets whether or not to drag the hand beyond where would be humanly possible and the same goes for the feet. I actually forgot to track the eyes, thanks to Gail for bringing this to my attention. To do that is simply just to use a damped track constraint from the eye to the bone of the rig. However, you won't need to do this as they will all be fixed in the soon to come update. You can pick any cloth from the wardrobe library, but because most of them come with simulations, we're going to do a very simple animation first, so from rest pose to this pose. We're going to come to the rest pose and add the cloth to the character. Check the modifiers and see if anything is read aside subdivisions. Now, without cloth enabled, check if the cloth is following the character at all. It is not, so we are going to bind the cloth to the character. Select the character and press set as target, then select the cloth and hit armature bind. You can try skin bind, but if that doesn't work then use armature bind. It will find the rig of the character and match the weight to the rig to work for the cloth as it would for the character. Now, the cloth has already been pinned at the hoodie area, so the cloth should work fine. Simply hit forward arrow on your keyboard until you get to the last frame to make sure that if there are any errors you can fix them by adjusting the animation or increasing the cloth quality steps. You can weight paint the pins group to reduce or increase the pins for each vertex. Now I'm going to add another cloth to show you another example. Come to the modifiers tab and set the character as the target for any modifier that's missing. Now we're going to bind this cloth with the character, so select the character and set as target and select the cloth and hit skin bind or armature bind. Skin bind didn't work in this instance so it's better to use armature bind. Skin bind is best when the clothes are tighter onto the skin, but this one failed because of a geometry issue on the character which will be fixed in the coming updates. 
Now I'm going to give one more example and we move on. Add the Molly character and we're going to animate her like this. Let's pick a relatively complex piece of clothing. Now let's disable the cloth and bind the cloth. Set her as target and use armature bind. Come over to the armature in the modifiers tab and enable preserve volume if it looks weird. Not bad. You can sculpt the areas that seem to intersect with the body. Let's try skin bind. Works great. And as you can see here, the elbow is poking out. So come to the first frame, pull it out and then hit skin bind twice to toggle it. Now you can hit forward arrow to bake it manually so you can spot errors or go over to the cloth settings and hit bake. And there we have it, another lollipop good to go. Starting with the foot, you can select these three edges and press Ctrl B, then select this edge, press X and dissolve edges. This way you can have more vertices if you need to connect it with your model. It's not the same with the hands for now, perhaps we'll change that in future. You have ears to choose from and the rest are self-explanatory. The skateboard has shape keys you can use to bend it, left, right, down, add suspension to it. The treadmill can be moved along its z-axis to roll it. And much more will be added in the future. Some people have asked how to get their characters into Mixamo, so here's how. First, select the character you would like to send to Mixamo and all the body parts. Then export as OBJ. Enable selected objects only so that it doesn't send your entire scene. Now come over to Mixamo.com and log in because they log you out every 5 seconds. Upload your character OBJ file and set it up for rigging. After it has been processed, select the animation you would like and then hit download. Now come into Blender, we don't need this character anymore and import FBX. He's so tiny. So check the armature and you can see its scale is 0.01. So just set the scale to 1 or press Alt S and we're good to go. To add close to this, we need him to be in rest pose first. So select the armature, go into pose mode and select all the bones. Go to the first frame and push all the keyframes forward by about 20 frames. Now with your mouse in the 3D view, press Alt R, Alt G and Alt S to reset the pose and then press I available to save that pose. Now in object mode, select the cloth you want, I'll pick this jacket, and as you can see the cloth is not colliding with our character so we'll give him collision. Well, then we're also going to bind the cloth with skin bind. Using forward arrow you can see this place rumples a bit too much so I'm going to increase the quality steps. Now bake the animation and it should be fine. Use the smooth modifier after the cloth and it'll be even finer. You can see the bottom of the jacket is pinned, come to vertex group and anyone that says pins go into edit mode and select that group. Select only the bottom part and remove from vertex group. Now we're going to bake it again and there we have it. This is the cat. When you open her up, you'll want to make sure Simplify is enabled, so toggle Simplify if it's not on already. Her beauty is in her fur, so open up the cat material and you'll see two RGB nodes. The top one leads to where you can customize the fur color. I'll duplicate it here so we have two RGB nodes. Now you can set the fur color. You can pose or animate the cat as you wish. More bones are on other layers over here, but they're unnecessary in my opinion. 